Russia is encircled by enemies, spies, foreign agents, and conspiracies all around. Navalny? Navalny is an agent of the West. He is their asset. Millions and millions of dollars spent. The Kremlin propagandists, just like their master, simply cannot comprehend that people can sincerely oppose the current Russian regime. Putin and his media watchdogs have long claimed that these people do it for money. Well, not only for money, but they are nothing more than puppets. But who is pulling the strings? Each and every employee of TV Rain must be declared a national traitor, and each of them must be charged with treason, every single one. They give opportunities to the yet unbeaten Ukrainian neo-Nazi scum and live off the West's funding doing their dirty work. I believe that any possessions that TV Rain employees still have in Russia must be arrested. Today we will talk about how Russian propagandists try to badmouth anyone who opposes their supreme leader Putin by claiming that these people are controlled by the evil West. Listen closely and take note. After all, according to Russian propagandists, this is all paid for by your tax money. Even this program you're watching right now. Oh, by the way, this is Fake News, the show where we combat Russian propaganda. I'm your host, Valeria Ratnikova, and before we move on, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe. Additionally, you can support us by donating to our channel. The link will be in the description. Victoria Nuland just resigned from the State Department. You might be asking yourself, why would Russians care about that? Well, the Kremlin propagandists painted her as Russia's greatest villain, although they can never make up their mind as to who is Russia's greatest villain, really. But they even called Nuland a witch. Here's why. Product diplomat Victoria Nuland. Ambassador Newland's main output was Russia hate, pure and simple, as well as that the coup in Ukraine, war and destruction of the country that she was working on. Yes, unfortunately, you heard that right. Victoria Newland is, of course, one of the main instigators of the so-called coup in Ukraine. That is what Russian propagandists, as well as Putin himself, call the revolution in Ukraine in 2014. But Newland is not just one of the bad guys. She's the main architect of the anti-Russian sentiment in Washington. But she didn't stop there. She all but created the Russian opposition. At least, that's what the Kremlin propagandist would have you believe. She wasn't engaged in diplomacy. She was busy interfering with the internal affairs of other countries. First of all, first in our country, then in Ukraine. By and large, she became the face of the anti-Russian campaign. Many opposition politicians and independent journalists fled Russia after Putin invaded Ukraine in 2022, whereas those that didn't were imprisoned. You could probably guess how the propagandists reacted to that. Of course, they had a field day. They were ecstatically screaming that the so-called anti-Putin opposition fled to their sponsors, revealing themselves for who they truly are. So apparently running away from danger of being imprisoned or sent to the front line proves that one is a foreign spy. Because who could possibly be against going to prison or dying in a criminal war? No, it's just amazing. This is just shocking. Shocking how they did everything in their power, that is, fans of the West, Victoria Newland, and all of Europe, did everything in their power to make sure that our country prevails. They took back those whom they invested copious amounts of money into, like the Navalny sect, these agents of foreign intelligence who work deep undercover. However, exile is not enough for some propagandists. Our star freak Vladimir Solovyov, an appreciate of luxury real estate in Europe, turned from ecstasy to despair. How could we have let them go? Why were the critics of the regime let out of the country? These runaway Navalnists, so-called journalists and other betrayers of the nation, I have just one question for our law enforcement agencies, or rather two. First, why have these traitors not been charged with treason yet? Second, how did all of these scumbags wind up abroad? Who made the decision to let them out of the country? Russian propagandists can't imagine sincere dissent. 
if you protested, you must have been paid. Who would pay you to do something like that? Of course, only the West would be so evil. The West has been dreaming of destroying Russia, that is, after investing in Russia after the Soviet Union collapsed. No faulty logic there. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the West decided to wait it out and gradually have Russia collapse as well, this largest country in Europe. Side note, propaganda in Russia is structured in the most unsophisticated way possible. The president's administration holds regular meetings which come up with the uniform ways to lie to the Russian people. The results of these meetings are then passed down to the propagandists in the form of a handbook on what to say. If that sounds a bit too hard to believe, you should check out Medusa's investigation, which was published in 2022. Let's look at an example. The handbook prescribes appealing to the way Germany influenced Russian politics in the early 20th century and saying that nothing has changed to this day. Now, what do the propagandists have to say? The West provides them informational support and helps them spread fakes. Almost all of them have taken up not only an anti-authority position, but also an anti-Russian one, blatantly welcoming the deaths of Russian service members. These are real traitors created by the spy services of Western countries. These propagandists are very experienced. Let's rewind to 2011 and 2012, when Russia was swept with a wave of mass protests against Putin's return to power and falsified elections. Here's what the propagandists said. Recently, the U.S. ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul, announced that the White House proposed to create a special foundation to support Russian civil society. Apparently, our opposition has already run out of the money they'd received from America at this point. Just imagine that these propagandists almost literally worked like a broken record for 10 years, claiming that anyone who disagrees with Putin is on the West's payroll. Remember Margarita Simonyan, the head of the biggest propaganda agency, Russia Today? Here's what she said in 2021, even before the invasion of Ukraine. We also have to understand that America is a country which doesn't have money for universal health care for its citizens, free higher education, maternity leave. This is the only civilized country in the world which doesn't have maternity leave. You give birth and you go right back to work but it does have money to sponsor traitors to our country. Now, a little bit of history. Don't worry, we are not Putin, so this will not take 30 minutes to be preposterous. Severin first settled in Latvia after being forced to flee Russia in 2022. Well, the face of Russian diplomacy, Maria Zakharova, came up with the most bizarre theory. Alex Jones, take some notes. According to Zakharova, TV Rain's journalists were rounded up and evaluated by the Latvian intelligence agencies. I can tell you that this is ridiculous and that nothing like that ever happened. But what do I know? I'm just a journalist at TV Rain. Indeed, everyone was summoned to the State Security Service, SGB, as it is called all those customs that the Baltic states resisted in the USSR somehow were carefully preserved. The Latvian SGB summoned them all for a serious conversation. For some, it lasted from five to six hours. For some, it concluded with the signing of a cooperation agreement. That's some wild imagination. Of course, stories like that are fabricated to defame journalists who refuse to work in accordance with a handbook from the Kremlin. That is, be real journalists. This makes propagandists come up with these ridiculous conspiracy theories that real journalists are actually paid by foreign intelligence. There is a saying in Russia, if you are going to lie, lie until the end. Well, Zakharova should have consulted that saying because she really didn't drive her point home. I wasn't informed of this by some, you know, secret service or special reports. The entirety of Latvia already knows about this. Truly, this is the hottest news in all of Latvia. 
Well, that should do it for today, but please let us know in the comments if you would like to see a part 2 of this video where we'll look at how Russian propagandists target us, the journalists that were forced to flee the country. My name is Valeria Ratnikova and this was an episode of Fake News, the show where we disprove Russian propaganda. I will see you next time for more insanity.